the Grand Alive. This is Coffee with Will, brought to you by Northwest Furniture and Mattress, Grand Ron Hospital, Anything2Digital.com, and Seabright Dentistry. And I'm here today with Kelly Rice, who is an associate, associate professor or professor? I am an assistant professor. Assistant professor yes. of health and wellness up at Eastern Oregon University. And she has come in today to talk to me about herself, health, and her recent program that she just got a grant for called Go ASAP. So thank you so much for joining thank me you. today. Kelly. So why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got into health and wellness and then how um, and then just how you got into being a professor and why health is important to you. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so I started um, when I went to when I was an undergrad, I was really, really interested in health, but I didn't want to be a PE teacher and I didn't want to be I didn't want to just do physical activity. I wanted mm -hmm. to be a little bit more holistic and just kind of I was interested in all the different aspects of health. And so I went to my advisor in, at the University of Montana, and I said, you know, I, this is what I want, but do you have any ideas? She goes, oh, health promotion's perfect for you. Mm. <laughs> and health promotion's amazing because it has, it's all the different kind of facets. Um, you can go anything from alcohol prevention to increasing physical activity and nutrition to whatever you want. Mm. Um, you have the education and how to help people change behaviors and the theories behind those. And so you can kind of apply it to so many different kind of aspects. Hmm. And that really intrigued me. Hmm. Um, and then after I finished, I just, I really loved the field and the variety that it had. Hmm. So I decided to do my master's degree. And I went to the University of Oklahoma in hmm. Norman, Oklahoma, <laughs> and oh. did my master's and really started to kind of fall in love with the promotion of physical activity on kind of a community-wide basis. So well, and that's individual. And that's the interesting thing is that you're also an extremely active person yourself. <laughs> and so why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do actively um, that gets you involved with these kinds of things? Uh, well, yeah, so, I mean, I can't teach it if I'm not going to do it, right? Yeah. So I have to make sure. Well, you sure could, that... but then you'd just be a hypocrite. Yeah, I just don't want to. I can't do that. <laughs> um, you should do that, but so, nobody else. I'm not going to yeah. do it. <laughs> well, physical activity to me is one of the it is the best buy in public health. So it's the mm. one thing that you can do to it just, it, it reaches the most preventable diseases, it helps with disease maintenance, it increases your, I mean, it decreases depression, mm. it increases self-esteem. I mean, it's just, it's endless amount of things that physical activity has that it can, and especially on a public health kind of aspect. Mm -hmm. um, if everybody would meet physical activity recommendations and increase their physical activity, we could really affect the larger scale and the larger community with diseases. Mm. Um, so I think that for me, not only is it important for disease prevention and maintenance, but it makes you feel really good. It's mm -hmm. really fun. <laughs> so I know that after I get done with my runs, I always feel amazing. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to go and do them, yeah. but then once you get done with them, you're like, oh, I feel amazing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And especially if it's something outside, you know, and you're mm -hmm. kind of up at Mira running on those amazing trails or doing something like that and just spending time alone, it kind of fits all the aspects of health, you know, the, the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, the mm -hmm. physical. I mean, physical activity affects all those things. Uh -huh. It's very cool. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I've, I've recently had a running injury, and so I can't go out and run very much. So, and That's then tough. yesterday I got out and got about two miles, and it felt amazing, mm -hmm. just absolutely amazing. And yeah. always just makes me realize how much I love it when I go out, and I haven't done it for a couple of days, and then you go out and you do it. Absolutely. And then you're yeah. like, oh, that feels amazing. <laughs> So that being said, let's talk a little bit about your program that you okay. just recently got funded. It's called mm -hmm. Go ASAP, and it's a program that works with kids um, to get them out and get them active right here in the community. So tell me a little bit about what, what made you want to do this? Mm -hmm. How did you incept it? How did you get the grant? Just kind of how did that work? Yeah, that's a great question. So it was combining my, my professional um, world with my like personal passion. Mm -hmm. And so I... You know, physical activity, getting outside, being active, all of those things are something that are really important to me. And I just want, wanted to kind of expand that and share that. And when I moved here, I worked with the UC Fit Kids Coalition, and they had done a needs assessment or a community assessment years ago and found out that we really have a lack of programs for kids that aren't involved in sports hmm. and that we are not us using our natural resources. Hmm. Um, so we have these mountains and these trails, and we're not really getting out and, and using them to promote physical activity hmm. like we should be or we could be. So with a huge community collaboration, we developed this grant. Now, what's a needs assessment? Yeah, so that's a great question. <laughs> so it <laughs> For was people a, who maybe, yeah. like me, don't know. Yeah, so you go out and you ask all these people in the community, like, 
what do you think is the biggest health concern mm -hmm. and how can we help kids or mm -hmm. how can we increase physical activity and healthy eating in our community? Hmm. So they asked teachers and doctors and students and parents and that was kind of the results of the result of that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it was really the cool. community that said this, that mm -hmm. we're not using our natural yeah. resources yeah. that we have available, which we do have quite a few of them exactly. around here. Yeah. So, okay, very cool. So after that, you went out and you applied for a grant. Well, I had a, a really amazing team with, mm. um, you know, Mountain Works and Blue Mountain Outfitters and all of these different organizations. We got together and we said, okay, what can we do? Mm. We developed this program. We applied for a grant. We got the Knight Community Partnership Grant. Um, from OHSU. It's a cancer prevention grant. Oh, so we hmm. received that last year to do a, a pilot study or a test to just see if we could, if it was feasible to have this little intervention in the grant. Hmm. So we had, we, originally we had about 18 students and we did anything from rock climbing, backpacking, snowshoeing, downhill skiing, you name it, we pretty much went out and had these kids do it. It's a 20 week program and we met twice a week. Very yeah. cool. And actually, let's take a quick little look at a recent video by a friend of ours on the subject, and we'll come right back. The idea of the grant came around, like, let's get these kids that are normally not active, that aren't involved in sports, and let's teach them all of these lifestyle activities that they could do after school. And then when they get into high school, hopefully they, you know, increase their self-confidence and their self-efficacy and their self-determination and they're intrinsically motivated to be more active on their own and that they'll do these things for the rest of their lives. The literature also shows that kids that are more active and spend more time outside are less likely to participate in risky behaviors such as drinking, smoking, um, getting in trouble. The first day it was, I'm lazy, I'm not doing any of these things. They were all really quiet and like hesitant to do anything. They almost didn't want to do it. They, there was a lot of fear in some of the activities. They're starting to develop these identities that they're, they're not active, that they're lazy, that they're not coordinated. And then watching that change and just seeing them try all these things and succeed at them and going up the chairlift for the first time or um, riding a mountain bike for the first time or making it up to the top of the rock wall. They're coming out of their shell a lot more. They're a lot more comfortable with everything they're doing. So that was last year's video. That was about the program last year. So what are you guys doing differently this year? Well, this year we've expanded to Baker County, mm -hmm. or Baker Middle School, and they are doing an amazing job. And they have um, all the students, and they're taking them out on Fridays. because So ours is on... So is it through the schools that they is, do this? It is, through middle school. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. gotcha. And so in the, in the literature, we see that in middle school is the time where we see the biggest decrease in physical activity. And then we start seeing the biggest increase in, like, kind of riskier behaviors, drinking, smoking, and all of those different well, things. Well, it makes so sense because is, middle yeah. school is terrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a challenge. I don't think I've ever met sure. someone who looks back yeah. at middle school and was like, that was, that was the best time of my life. <laughs> yeah. I don't hear that either. No, you yeah. don't hear that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've expanded it to Baker and we're doing it again in Legrand. And the other neat piece of it is that all the students that participated last year have come back as leaders for hmm. this year. So we have a big group and it's really fun. So, but this program sort of begs the question, why is it important to get kids especially out and active yeah. in, this, in, in this day and age, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the idea is that we teach lifestyle activities. Mm. So if you can develop healthy habits as a kid, then they're, you're much more likely to continue those habits into adulthood. So getting away from, you know, just kickball or dodgeball, um, teaching them things that maybe they can do for the rest of their lives. So go hiking or go cross-country skiing or play disc golf around campus. I mean, they have access to these things. We live in this area and they're really, they're available. So if we can hmm. teach them at a, at a younger age, then they're more likely to do it for the rest of their lives. Hmm. And that's what's important. And it's all about prevention. Right? So, I mean, that's what health promotion is about. If we can just prevent people from getting sick, then that's the biggest, that's the best thing you can possibly do hmm. is just prevent things from happening. Stay active, eat healthier, um, mm -hmm. don't start smoking, wear your seatbelt, you mm -hmm. know, and then you can just, it, your quality of life is just a lot higher. The amount of money that you're going to spend on prevention is yeah. going to be much less than the amount of money that you're going to spend in the Absolutely. long run, both as an individual and as a country on being heart disease, cancer, Absolutely. all of those kinds of 100%. things. Yeah. So I guess my next question for you is, is as a health educator, mm -hmm. as a health promoter, how can someone, you know, 
who is maybe a single mom, maybe someone that spends a lot of time with, you know, running around doing things, has multiple kids. How can a parent encourage their kid to get out and to do these things on a on a time schedule that is already full and maximi yeah. maxed out? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I mean, I think that that one of the issues is people think that they need to, they have to go to the gym or they have to do these things um, that are set as exercise, but mm -hmm. any kind of movement is healthy. So, mm. you know, if you just even walk around the block with the dog or, mm. you know, things that you should do, you need to do anyways, but making a game out of shoveling the driveway at this point, <laughs> whatever. Well, I'm going to have to figure that one out. <laughs> I know. Just made that one up. I'm not sure. We'll work on That's that. That's the ideal yeah. situation. I haven't figured out how to actually put figure that one into out. practice yeah. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Play tag or something. Yeah. <laughs> Throw the snow at each yeah. other or something. <laughs> so just any kind of movement and anything that you can just incorporate throughout the day. And it doesn't have to be, you know, an hour of exercise. It can be like 10 minutes here and 10 minutes here and 10 minutes here. Mm. So just trying to move as much as possible. Park further away when you're going to the store. Um, mm. Just small little things like that make a huge difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, all right. I think we're just about out of time. So thank you so much yeah, for joining me today. You. This is super fun and very informative, both <laughs> I hope for me and for you, LeGrand Alive. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Coffee with Will and Kelly Rice, brought to you by Grand Run Hospital, Northwest Furniture and Mattress, AnythingToDigital.com, and Seabright Dentistry. Please like and share this video and tune in to LeGrandAlive.tv for more local content.